for my final project, I wanted to cover deploying a Node.js web application using AWS. I'm a web developer by trade, so this was of obvious interest to me, how I can connect my application to DynamoDB, how I can get queues and topics going, and different things like that. So I found an AWS guide which did just that. And um, here's a look at that guide. And I followed it. Um, the guide wasn't very, it didn't exactly hold your hand along the way, so I built what I consider a better guide. Um, and it's also a little opinionated, so some of the things I wanted to personally do, I made those changes and added them in this guide. And I also, AWS provides a sample application to deploy. I also personalized that application a bit. So let me get right to it. So we start off by um, navigating to the create a web app part of Elastic Beanstalk. And let's get Elastic Beanstalk going. Here we go. So you're going to enter an application name. You can leave this area blank. The defaults should work for most people. Um, and then for platform, you'll pick your relevant platform depending on the web application you're trying to um, deploy. For me, that was Node.js. Um, and then you will you can either upload a zip or you can um, have it use a sample application once you're done creating the app. So I went through this process, which will take you down to here in my guide and I ended up with um, let me go to my elastic beanstalk I ended up with my application here um, and then once your application is created it needs to create um, EC2 instances and make calls to the database and whatnot so you actually have to provide Elastic Beanstalk with those permissions. And how you do that is you go to um, the roles area in um, IAM. Um, and you search for that Elastic Beanstalk EC2 role, which I already had because I guess I must have searched it recently for this project. And then you go in there and you can give it permissions so uh, or attach other permission policies to that role. So I was able to add um, uh, DynamoDB full access, SNS full access. That allows um, the Elastic Beanstalk role to make the changes that my application would need. Um, so that part's done. Now once that's done you're actually ready to deploy and test your application which is the meat of the matter in this case. Um, so I'll go back to Elastic Beanstalk and go into my sample application It'll load the, uh, the application. Um, so this application has already been uploaded and deployed once. And how we do that is by clicking the upload, um, choosing a zip version of um, our project. Let's see if I can get there. Final project. So this is my node application. I made some changes in the app.js file and a few other places. Um, it also has instructions that um, AWS needs to kick off the Elastic Beanstalk instance. Um, but anyway, once I zip the file, 
I'm able to deploy it through here. Give it a version number just so you can roll back to a certain version or um, just versionize your application. Um, and then you're able to deploy your um, application. And once it's deployed, um, it'll log down here the status of your application once it's fully deployed. You'll get a green health. This just shows some details on my environment. I got Node.js running on Amazon Linux and uh, a URL. Um, let's navigate to that URL. So here we go. Our Node.js website is now up and running. So I just kind of took the sample application, like I said earlier, and made some changes just to personalize it. I just kind of made a funny site about me giving out AWS lessons that somebody could sign up for. Um, so I made a little form where one could enter their own personal information and sign up. Um, and let's see where that takes us in the guide. So you deploy the application, give it a version number, deploy, and then you can sign up. All right, so the next part was when somebody does sign up, their information would need to go in a table. So I went ahead and uh, created a DynamoDB table. Tables. Node.js. Items. So you can see this table has some data points already. These are all from my web form. So um, somewhere in my code, I actually have a line that points to this database. Um, right in I have a reference somewhere in here to um, the table. So, yeah, somewhere in my um, config files, I point to this Node.js tutorial. Um, and by doing that, when the application is deployed, it's looking for this table and it's writing to it um, these fields. So, um, let me go ahead and show you how that's working. So I'm going to make a random user, Linus, Linus at Linux.edu. And he's interested in a monthly digest. Let's sign him up. Thanks for signing up. That means that there were no errors and this was successful, which means that if I refresh my table, voila, I have a Linus, Linus, Linus at Linux edu entry in my database. So this shows that we have uh, an application running on Elastic Beanstalk with a solid connection to our DynamoDB table, um, which was huge for me because CRUD from a GUI to a database is my bread and butter as a web developer. Uh, moving on from this section. Oh, here you go. So, well, the file is actually. So, where I point to the. Just for those that are interested, I'll show you where exactly I made the change. Final project. Node.js. There, here we go. Um, so I added my email address in here, and then we also point to the Node.js tutorial table. So this is where we are um, 
putting out to AWS that this is a table we want to use, and then startup signup table is a table referenced in app.js down here. So that's how it knows where exactly to send that data from the signup table. So that's the database part of my um, guide. I also um, added some auto scaling. Now this application, it's not too um, heavy on my server, so I, um, I could have spent some more time to um, simulate extra users or um, play with instances, but I didn't. So um, I'll just show you what I did to enable auto scaling, though. So usually in auto scaling, you would have uh, you would start off with one instance and go up to four. Um, but just to kind of maybe you're expecting more clients from the get-go or something um, I actually played around with starting off with a higher capacity um, and you could do that by going into the configuration area of your application within Elastic Beanstalk and bumping up your um, uh, number of instances from one to two and hitting save apply and once that saves um, there so this is actually deploying the application again so this is kind of cool to show if you would have done an upload up, upload and deploy this is what the application would have done is um, gone through logging the status as it deploys and this would be kind of cool because we're starting off at two instances meaning that um, we're also using AWS's load balancer capability so as users keep hitting the website they'll actually be hitting between the two instances and then as we get more than two or three users will actually bump up in instances all the way up to four as we set it up um, so while I wait for this to happen I will actually um, also go through my topic and queue which I set up for this project so every time a new user is created in this case it was Linux Linus at Linux if you remember um, I am actually writing to a SNS um, service which my SQS topic is subscribed to so here we see we have a couple messages on my queue and if I view those messages start pulling let's sort this by time so yeah, about 9 o'clock. More details. And yeah, look at that. So Linus signed up and uh, I got a message to my queue, which is uh, huge in terms of possibilities because now that you receive this in your queue, you can trigger all sorts of different um, tasks or jobs. Um, you can use APIs. I mean, the world is your oyster from here. So I think that's a pretty cool capability. Um, and then if I go to my SNS, you can actually see the subscribers to this topic. Um, and so this is the one that this project creates. And you can see that, um, so my SQS, um, Q is a subscriber and then also my email so every time somebody signs up I get an email saying somebody signed up and uh, so that's kind of cool you can have any number of subscribers to your topic here um, and that is about it for my application uh, see I'm running a little bit over on time but I just wanted to kind of explain everything that I did so this is a pretty cool um, uh, this was a cool experience for me because I, you know, got to create a website, but then 
um, seeing that I can hook to a database and I can write to a, a queue just opens up all kinds of possibilities. So I'm really excited to continue developing with AWS and maybe comparing it to like Google App Engine or other um, cloud development um, um, infrastructures and seeing what I can do with that. Um, thanks for watching.